What's up, Cal Gang? Welcome to Physics 2. All right. So we got this conducting sphere. So it's got this inner radius and this outer radius and this hollow on the inside. And there's a charge in the center that's plus Q. But the entire outside of the sphere is charged with negative 3Q. And there's a whole lot of stuff we need to find, basically. Uh, I think there's G parts to this question. So G parts, let's get started on that. OK, so part one, it wants us to find, uh, it wants us to derive the expression for the field in terms of distance r from the center origin where radius is less than a. So we're looking in this area here, basically from the center all the way out to the inside of the sphere. What is the electric field, right? Let's find an equation for that. So we're going to be using Gauss's law. Um, there's a lot more nuance to this one, but the general equation that we're going to be using, and which is going to be pretty much like all of it, Q enclosed. This is the simplified equation, or basically the, the equation you use when you have a sphere or something where it's pointing like radially outward or it's perpendicular to the area. It's kind of confusing, but uh, don't worry about it too much. Just look at this equation. So we're trying to find an electric field, right? So let's go ahead and find that. So looking for electric field, we want to just simplify it to get it by itself. Uh, this is part A. So electric field, we're going to divide by area, of course, to get Q enclosed over epsilon naught area. So Q enclosed, what is Q enclosed? Well, Q enclosed, of course, is the charge enclosed in our area. So you might be tempted to think, well, maybe there's a negative three in the Q, but we're looking at just the area right now between the center and A. So in this area, the only charge that's inside of that is this positive Q. So this Q is going to be just positive Q. Don't get it too confused. So this is just positive Q. That's the charge. So epsilon naught is just a constant, of course, but area. We need to find the area of that area, right? So in terms of radius, so if we go out, we're making a sphere, right? We're making a 3D sphere. It looks something like, uh, like that, you know what I mean? It's a sphere. Uh, the radius or the surface area of a sphere is four pi radius squared. That's the surface area on the inside or the outside of a sphere. So of course, if we're finding this area of the sphere, we're just gonna plug that right in for area. So four pi radius squared. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's part one. So this is your answer to part one A. Uh, just Q over epsilon four pi radius squared. So part B, right? What is part B asking? Let me find out. I think part B is asking, what is the charge in region in that region that we just made the equation for? Uh, which direction does the electric field vector point? Right. Okay. Let's do it. So because it's positive, it's going to be pointing outward. Right? We found that this Q is positive, right? So it's going to be pointing outward. So it's going to be going this way, this way, this way. So radically outward is the answer. Uh, radically outward. Let me write that down. Outward. Yep. All right, let's go C. C is asking. Uh, so now we're in the region between A and B, right? We're in this sphere. We're in the, or the, the metal part of the sphere. So if we're inside of a sphere, or inside a conducting shell, what's the charge going to be? Well, we're inside the conducting shell. So logically, there can't be an electric field inside of it. So simply, E is just equal to zero inside of the, inside of the conducting shell. So there you go. That's part uh, C, pretty simple. Just got to use your uh, common, you got to use your reasoning brain on that one. So now we're going outside. Now we're looking at the radius is greater than B. So we're going to be in this area outside of the sphere. Let's go ahead and do that. So we're using the same equation. Let's just start here. E is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught area. So area is going to be the same. We're finding still a sphere. But Q enclosed is going to be different this time. Because now, we, when we were looking at the inside, just to radius A, the only enclosed charge was this positive Q. But now, once we're out here, we have the entire conducting shell of negative three Q. So simply, if you want to do that, you're just going to add them up together. So it's going to be this positive Q minus three Q is your Q enclosed. Then again, epsilon naught, four pi radius squared is the inside. So to simplify this, this becomes a negative two on the top, and the negative two it's going to cancel out, or it's going to become, or it's going to have an interaction with this four. What's going to end up happening is you're going to get E 
is equal to negative q over epsilon naught two pi radius squared. Yeah. And I think, is it asking for the magnitude? For the magnitude, so if you want to find the magnitude, of course magnitude is just not negative, so e is equal to, the magnitude of e is just q over epsilon naught two pi radius squared. So you don't even put a negative answer, you might get the wrong thing. So if you got a wrong thing there, just make it positive and you'll do good. All right, so that's the answer, part E, let's move on. Oh, it just keeps going, this problem never ends. In the region, R is greater than B, which direction does the electric field vector point? So yeah, we're out here. And what field is our electric field gonna go? Well, like we said here, if it's positive, it's pointing outward. This time it's negative. So if it's negative, it's gonna be pointing inward. So radically inward. Yes. Here we go. On to F. Oh, I love when we get to part F. No, I'm just joking. What is the surface charge density on the inner surface of the conducting shell? Okay, let's go ahead. Do that. Let me need to read my notes real quick. Yeah, okay. So, surface charge density, uh, label with that, I forgot what it's called, is it, it's not omega, is it? No, it's not omega. We're gonna call it that thing for now. Surface charge density. Surface charge density is the charge you have over the area that it's in. So, our surface charge density on the inside, what's it gonna be? Well, our charge on the inside, well, it's a positive, right? But it's pointing to the inner circle and because charge goes positive to negative, if it's positive here, it's going to be negative on the shell. So Q is going to be a negative Q. Negative Q. And we said area again for a sphere is 4 pi radius squared. Right? So negative P over 4 pi radius squared. But our radius, we know it because it's on the inner surface of the conducting shell, it's going to be, the radius is going to be equal to A. So this R just becomes an A. So your equation is 4 pi, or negative Q, over four pi area, or a squared, just like that. And g, what is g asking for? It's too much, it's just too much. What is the surface charge density on the outer surface of the conducting shell? Yeah, let's do it. G, finally, last part, okay, let me get my chair. Okay, once again, all right, let's do it. So we're again looking for surface charge density, it's Q over A. We know A is going to be the same, but Q on the outside, like we said earlier, is going to be all of it enclosed. So it's going to be the positive Q minus the 3Q. So here it's going to be equal to negative 3Q plus the 1Q plus the Q over 4 pi radius squared. If you simplify this, it becomes negative 2 over 4 pi radius squared, which just becomes negative Q over 2 pi radius squared. But, because we're on the outside, right? On the outer surface, right? On the outer surface, our radius is not just radius, our radius is B, because it's exactly at the radius B. We know that number, or we know that is a, a constant or whatever. So here we go, Q, negative Q over 2 pi B squared. That's G. Yeah, so this is a pretty thorough question, right? It really just asks everything you need to know about this problem. So if you're able to do this, you're kind of on a good track, right? You're gonna be able to keep moving on with the, the laws and do pretty good, right? So yeah, if you need any help, feel free to watch more of my videos and I'll see you next time, guys.